Let's talk about BlackBerry. They're known for their keyboards. They're no, there's no denying that. It's just a signature thing from them. Now, after the launch of the original iPhone, they kind of failed to generate any interest just because touchscreen smartphones have proven to be quite as versatile when it comes to touch input. Now, BlackBerry as a whole has tried several times in the past already to try and reinvent themselves. For example, you had the BlackBerry Storm and even BlackBerry 10 OS, but still they failed to generate any sort of meaningful interest from consumers. And to that degree, they've kind of become obscure in the last few years. So what can they do next? How about making an Android powered smartphone? Hey guys, John D from Phone Arena here. You're watching our video review of the BlackBerry Priv. Now, if you have to ask us what's the single greatest part about the Priv, it's the fact that you get the rich Android experience paired with BlackBerry's legendary security. It tries to follow stock Android for the most part, but you do see BlackBerry's influences here and there. You see in things like the BlackBerry Hub and even those red asterisks you see in the home screen with many of the icons to indicate you're getting some sort of notification. Luckily, many of the native applications on the phone are stock Android, so there's no deviation there. There's a lot of security placed on the hardware itself, so it's hard to really crack, but also on the software side, and you see in things like the picture lock option with the lock screen, you don't see that the Android, and also the DTEC security system, which scans for any vulnerabilities with the software. Unfortunately, for a handset that prides itself on security, there's no fingerprint sensor. However, though, it does have access to the Google Play Store, and that's pretty awesome. The design is just gorgeous. You get a svelte-looking industrial design for a phone with a portrait-style keyboard, and as a whole, it's very rare to see keyboards on a phone, so BlackBerry did a great job. It follows after the Passport's design. You see many of the influences here. For example, the aluminum grade uh, material on the, with the frame, and you have this textured back casing, which has a carbon fiber print to it. The whole thing looks nice, looks beautiful, and feels good in the hand. The keyboard offers the convenience of tactility, so if you want that physical response, you're no doubt gonna get it here. The keys themselves are tiny, but at least you have punctuations and numbers at your disposal through the main layout. It also is touch sensitive like the Passport's keyboard, so you can use it for navigating the web browser and even precisely putting the cursor in a specific spot. Despite all that, we still find touch input to be faster than the physical one. There's a lot going with the Priv, but we can't forget about the display. You have a dual curve 5.43 inch Quad HD AMOLED display, so great specs right there but it's pretty weak with its brightness output, output, so it's tough to view outdoors. And as all the qualities of AMOLED technology, you have those wide angles, and wide viewing angles, and those rich oversaturated colors. You could make it more natural in the settings, but by default, it's pretty overblown. They have those curved edges on the side. They're not as pronounced as the S6 Edge or Edge Plus, but you have some gentle slopes giving it good aesthetics. The main purpose of it is getting access to the productivity tab and you can gain, gain access to the BlackBerry Hub and all the other productivity tools like the calendar and even your messages. The other feature with the edges is the battery edge feature. When you connect it to a power source, it lights up this bar inside to indicate the status level, but that's about it. For being its very first Android powered smartphone, they put in a pretty good camera. You have an 18 megapixel camera with an f2.2 aperture lens, you have BSI, optical image stabilization, 4K recording, and dual LED flash. Now the interface is kind of light with the features, very few shooting modes and no manual controls, but it makes it up with its better than average quality. You get details with very little post-processing effects like over sharpening, but colors tend to come out a little bit in the colder side. HDR does nicely to give even exposure throughout the shot, and its panoramic quality comes out with a lot of good detail while doing a good job also stitching. You do get a diminished quality under lower light, so that means smudger details and noise, but it's still pretty usable. And as far as footage capture with 4K, it's really good. Lots of details, stable footage, quick autofocus, and clear recording. So it's a pretty good offering from BlackBerry. You get a sense we're dealing with a high-end phone here because it's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 808, just like the Nexus 5X and the Moto X Pure Edition. Now, we actually get good overall performance out of it, but it's kind of light on the graphics processing. It's not quite as smooth as we like, but still usable. For a phone with a Snapdragon 808, it's one of the best out there in terms of battery life. It has a 3410 mAh battery, and that's larger than most of the other phones with the Snapdragon 808. 
You're able to get easily a day of normal usage out of it. And in our battery benchmark test, it achieves a mark of seven hours and 20 minutes, which is an hour better than the Moto X Pure Edition and even the Nexus 5X. However, though, it does take a long time to charge with the included charger. It takes roughly 155 minutes to get back to full capacity. Well, there's several great things that really impressed us about the Priv. We also have some concerns with it. The first one being, there's, a, there's no support for CDMA with this device. It's GSM only, and here in the US, it's gonna be made available through AT&T. So if you're a Sprint or a, or a Verizon customer, you're pretty much out of luck. So that's kind of limiting in many ways. Secondly, the GPS and Bluetooth radios are a little bit finicky with the handset. It just had a tough time locking to our location with Google Maps. And when we paired it with the Bluetooth headphones, it seemed to work in only a certain way. And lastly, there's just a lot of static through the earpiece when it comes to phone calls. The volume output's great, but you just notice a very strong presence of static noise. It's a little bit more subdued with the speaker foam, but it still kind of hinders the experience. BlackBerry definitely has a solid offering here with the Priv. It's just fantastic for a first time effort from them. Now in terms of price point, it is on the pricey side at $700, and that's in the same capacity as the iPhones, the Galaxy S6s out there. But we find it to be justified because you have high-end specs to tow with this phone. You have also have solid industrial design. You have those dual curved edges with the screen, large battery life, and a combination of BlackBerry's legendary security with the rich ecosystem Android. So a perfect marriage overall. Also, if you want a physical keyboard in a phone, especially a high-end phone, this is one of the few phones to have it. And it's just a solid offering from the start to the finish. And secondly, if security is very pertinent to you, you're gonna get that here with the BlackBerry Priv. If those are two of your main criteria, a keyboard and security, this is the phone to get.